Let's go over to the next game that was... If you, you had to stay up for this one until like 2.30 a.m. Eastern time if you wanted to watch the end of this one, which you should have because it was an unbelievable ending. Miami, 39. Cal, 38. Dolan, Miami was down by 25 points halfway through the third quarter with their biggest comeback win since 2003. Miami had this one at one point, Dolan, according to ESPN's a win probability, had a 0.6% chance to win this game. Last week... Miami trailed by 10 to Virginia Tech with nine minutes left and had a win probability of 13.8% as well. I'm saying it right now, man. Miami seems like a team of destiny right now. They, they are just winning these games in the most un-Miami way possible. It's like They usually be losing games because of this. They're winning these games now. Just an unbelievable comeback. The biggest comeback I believe we saw yesterday. 25 points by Miami halfway through the third quarter with about 23 minutes left. They made a 25-point comeback. Uh, unreal comeback by Miami to uh, to not be one of the five top 11 teams that lost. Yeah, um, look... Miami needs to get off to better starts in these games because yeah. we've seen it the last two games. But uh, Cam Ward is one of the handful of quarterbacks that can just will you to a win. And, and you don't want him doing this every single week unless people in, in Coral Gables want to have a heart attack. But um, Cam, is he's just willing him to a win right now. I mean, yep. that's these are the facts. They are not playing their best football for four quarters at all over the last two weeks. Uh, the pick six he threw was about as bad as a pick six oh, as yeah, you will horrible. ever see. Um, but he, he just wills them to a win right now. And, they, and when there's – right now, opponents of Miami need to know that if they don't step on them while they're down, they're going to come back because yep. Cam Ward's just going to will them back. And he's he's not afraid of anything. He's not afraid of 35 to 10. He's not afraid of any defense. This is just what you're getting with Cam Ward right now. They, do they need to play better yep. to win the ACC and all of that? Absolutely. But Cam Ward's one of five or six guys in the country right now who could just straight up will you to a win. Yep. So Cam Ward, even with that pick six to on, was still Miami's highest graded player in this win with a 91 grade. Simeon Barrow Jr. at 83.6. Daryl Porter Jr. at a 79.6. Wesley Besaint, the uh, linebacker, at a 79. Jacoby George at a 74.8. And Xavier Estrepo at a 74.8. 0.7. Let's go over to the California Golden Bears with their highest graded players in this one. Their highest graded player was defense tackle Aiden Keon Aina at a 77, Craig Woodson at 75.8, Teddy Buchanan at a 72.1, TJ Ballers at a 71.1, Victor Stoffel at a 70, and then Fernando Mendoza, their quarterback, was at a 51.7 grade in this one. Dolan, for you, what was the stat that told the story in this massive Miami comeback? So we'll, we'll get to Cam Ward again in a minute, but when you have a giant blown lead like this, it always takes two to tango, right? And, and I think the big thing for me, you could feel it in the second half when the momentum started rolling Miami's way. Obviously, Miami has to score points, but Cal also just could not sustain drives and just couldn't milk any of the clock. I mean, even when, when Miami got it to within one score and got the ball back, they had like the full two minutes to work with. I mean, this wasn't a thing where they threw a Hail Mary with 10 seconds left. They just one drive at a time on offense and defense broke this thing down. And the big thing for me with Cal was, look, they made some explosive plays in the past game. They had the pick six, which was obviously huge for them. They only had 20 design carries for a total of 55 yards. They, they didn't run the ball at all. Miami's run defense kept them in this game. Jade Knott had seven carries for two yards. Oh my God. Uh, Cal's not going to survive like that. And we talked about their offensive line and their problems blocking people. This is what happened in the run game in this game. Is they just Reuben Bain back for Miami. We know about their great defensive line. Simeon Barrow was great. Wesley Besaint was great. They didn't run the ball at all, and they didn't block anybody in the run game at all. 0 0.8 yards before contact per design carry. <sighs> they just – the run game. They just could not – even at a moment – okay, even if Miami scores twice and it's 35 to 20 – or 38 to 24, whatever it was, 38 to 25, you still have – the ability to possess the ball and milk the clock and run the ball and just get out of there. Just escape any way you can. They had the ball with four minutes left and the lead. Yep. And they just could not run the They were unable to run the ball. They were unable. Miami had the ball, I believe, for 35 minutes in this game. Cal didn't have any possessions. I mean, they were riding a handful of explosives on offense in the pick six. But they didn't possess the ball at all, and they didn't run the ball at all. And, it, it, again, it takes two to tango in a comeback like this. And Cal's, Cal's offense just could not sustain drives with their run game. Which is just crazy to think about because if you told me what's the strength of this Cal offense, it's straight not. 
Jaden Ott is seven been, carries for two yards is jarring. That's insanity, dude. And, and Jaden Ott entered the year as a top five running back in the country for us, I believe. And top could, seven, something, something right. like that. Yeah, I, I think I had him top five. You might have had him a little bit lower, but he was a guy that like was awesome in his freshman year, awesome in his sophomore year. We're like, all right, he's gonna continue to just carry this offense, and he's had some struggles this year. I know he's been battling injuries as well, um, which has been you know leading to some inefficiencies and maybe still they're not is. they're not blocking anybody. But that's another thing too; they're just not blocking anyone either. So it's it's a lot of things going wrong in the Cal run game. But my uh, my my stat that tells a story. So in the first half, it really was a tale of two halves. Honestly, first half yards per play, uh, Miami averaged four point six yards per play. Cal averaged ten point two yards per play. Second half, Miami eight point three yards per play. Cal five and a half yards per play. So basically doubled Miami's yards per play in the first half to second half. And Cal was, was cut in half essentially from the first half to second half. And the EPA per play that you see right there, Miami in the first half negative point oh eight two EPA per play. Miami in the second half. 0.564 EPA per play. Cal, 0.454 in the first half, negative 0.266 in the second half. Miami outscored Cal 39 to 17 in the second half after going into halftime down 21 to 10. Dude, the Hurricanes are the cardiac kids right now, honestly. they You can never count them out. A 25-point lead, 10 minutes left. We're like, oh, wow, we're going to have six top 11 teams lose. And Cam Ward put on a Superman cape and led them on that unbelievable comeback. And like I said, they were winning in ways that we did not think were possible for Miami. Usually Miami loses games like this, and not this year, because Cam Ward has been that superhuman for him. And you and I both agree that as of right now, the Heisman Trophy should be a non-quarterback. But if you're going to give it to a quarterback, it's to Cam Ward because he is the one that is uh, really willing this team to victory right yeah, now. Yeah, absolutely. And it's not just the numbers and the production and the big-time throws and all that. It's it, it's absolutely what you said. And obviously, he's my most impressive part of this yep. game. It just has to be. You, first of all, you lead a 35-10 to 10 comeback. You almost It's almost legally required for me to make you most <laughs> impressive. But let, let me give you just the numbers for the fourth quarter, okay? 15 for 22, 238 yards. Two passing touchdowns, three carries, 38 yards, and a rushing touchdown. That's a whole day's work for many guys in the fourth quarter. And this year in the fourth quarter of games, he's got an 88.2 overall grade, which is a top 10 mark in the country. He, it, it, That's what it's about. He's just willing, he's willing them through the tough times. And if they start playing better in the first three quarters of these games, now you've got a real dangerous thing with Miami where it's like, okay, they're actually – maybe one of the five best teams in the country. They're going to win the ACC. They're going to do those things. They have to start playing better. But there again, I say it all the time, there is something to be said for winning when you're not playing your best football, right? And, yep. and if you have a quarterback that can bail you out when you're not playing your best football, you've got, you've got a situation now where, okay, Miami's gotten through it. They've gotten th Maybe they got through the difficult part. These West Coast trips too, I'm just going to throw this out there, not easy no. at all. This is I think they said this is about as far as possible that any team is is going to go on a schedule this year outside of playing Hawaii. We've seen it. We've seen it already. I, I think what is it in the Big Ten? I think teams are one and seven or one and eight on cross country. I mean, look at trips. look at the desk right now. I mean, you got Miami lose, Miami barely winning. Washington beating Michigan at home. You got Minnesota beating USC at home. Like, yeah, yeah. You see, this is a thing. This yeah. is a thing. This is a this is a consequence of this conference realignment. And, and and I think when you're getting these, they talk about it in the NFL when you have to go three time zones east. It's not easy. That alone creates a different circumstance for the game. So for Miami to come away with this from a Cal team that was playing really well at home in game day, raucous environment. I mean, more power to Cam Ward to, to get him through that because there's 99% of quarterbacks in the country don't do that. Absolutely. So Miami to Berkeley is 3,033 miles. That's all. I feel – listen, they flew there. Those equipment guys that got to drive the equipment there, that's 44 hours in a car, in a truck that you're driving to uh, – Literally across the country from Miami to, to Berkeley. Uh, so, yeah. You know. Shout out equipment staff. Shout, dude, shout yeah. them out. That, that is a tough – you think that you know, flying there is tough. Driving 44 hours for that game is tough, too. And thankfully for them, their team won the game. That would have been a, a brutal ride home if they if they ended up losing that one. You mentioned Cam Moore as your, as your most impressive. I'm going to go with this top receiver, and that's Xavier Restrepo. Seven catches on nine targets for 163 yards, 81 yards after the catch. All seven of his catches went for a first down. What I love about Xavier Strepo and why he is so valuable to this Miami team, Cam Ward loves to play hero ball. But when you have a receiver like Xavier Strepo, that's a security blanket. You don't need to play hero ball out there every play. Because if he did, you could see more of the pick sixes that we see from Cam Ward. But he knows he's got, he's got the ultra, ultra reliable Xavier Strepo to rely on every time. That has been a big reason why Cam Ward has been able to 
be one of the best, be the best quarterback in the country so far this year. Xavier Shepel on the season, no drops on 43 targets this season. Seventh most yards in the country at 584. Listen, we talk about Tetro McMillan. We talk about Luther Burden. We talk about the true freshman receivers that are balling right now. He should be in that discussion as one of the best receivers in the country. He is a route-running savant, always knows how to present an open target. And I understand the athleticism is not all there, the size is not all there, but I, I would love to get this guy in my NFL team, you know, in the NFL draft this year. I, I just love this kid, dude, and I think he is one of the most valuable players for Miami right now because he just he presents that security blanket that Cam Ward desperately needs. Yeah, no, I, I, I don't think there's a receiver with a higher football IQ in the country, yeah. and I don't think there's a more clutch receiver. Every single time in the past two weeks, when they need, it's fourth and eight, yep. when they need the play of the game. Literally, when they need the play that's going to win or lose them the game, who gets the ball, Xavier Restrepo, I, and I'm with you, I would draft him in the second round tomorrow. Yep, I, I no question. He's an he's an NFL made slot receiver. Like and and the route running and everything. I you know, it's it's some of the same traits that I, I think remind us a little bit of say somebody like Cooper Cup, where it's just like oh, he's just always open. He's always yep. open. He's always open right when you need him to be. If there was a guy right now that I needed to pick up a third and ten in the entire country. It might, it might be him. Yeah. And I know there's Tedero McMillan. I know there's Travis Hunt. It really might be him because at the level of football IQ at receiver is just ridiculous. He's so good, and he makes every big play for him. Absolutely. So Miami barely escaping with a victory. So 39-38 to final score there. 